All right, what is growing on? So it is January 1st, 2023. I'll start off by saying Happy New Year. I hope you guys had a wonderful holidays and an awesome New Year's. And I'm here to make you a little bit of a farm freeze update today. Um, I wanted to wait a couple of weeks since we had this really cold event just to see what all died. A lot of times right after you get that cold event, you know, some things don't show it right away. Some things take a week, some things take two weeks. Um, one, for example, I could see over my right shoulder this way is the Monstera. It looked really good for about a week and some of the leaves are starting to get brown now. Um, it hasn't taken it as bad as it has some years in the past, but looking over my left shoulder here, um, you guys could see the spiraling ginger, bananas in the back, the leaves are all white and fried. Um, a lot of that center stem, um, the upright stem is fine. So we've had colder events here. Um, a lot of people don't know, Florida does get cold. We get frost, we get freeze, um, you know, while a lot of the other parts of the country had an extreme cold event. So do we here in Florida. I believe one of the nights we were below freezing by 7 p.m. Um, I think it was about 25 degrees for six or seven hours. The night before that, we were about 23 degrees. Um, some things really got burnt. Now, just so you guys know, around the farm, everything we have planted in the ground, we didn't protect. We didn't do anything to. Um, a lot of this stuff is tried and true. We've been growing it here for nine years now. We know what will make it and what won't. And it's got, to, it's, it's got me kind of surprised um, how well a lot of the mangoes have done, how well a lot of the lychees, longins, you know, some of the things that I lost in earlier years actually look pretty good. Um, you know, I'll show you a couple of big mangoes here that really didn't even start showing any type of damage until a couple of days ago. Some of them even looked untouched completely. Um, you know, looking over into these areas, you can see like the exposed hibiscus here on the end. You know, this is the Turk's cap. It has some fried tips on it. Most of the plant is still fine. We'll prune this back. It'll come back really nice. Spiral ginger is going to get cut down to the ground, just completely re-sprout. Um, shampoo ginger, that goes dormant anyway. That dies in the wintertime. This cold event just kind of set it off and got it moving just a little bit faster. You can see the bananas, though. I mean, they just look completely white. The day after, they kind of look black. It was pretty... Uh, Pretty bad, but pretty typical. This is something we deal with here every year. We know we're gonna get frost. We know the bananas are gonna look ugly. Um, you can see the center stem though. This is what I was talking about. Look how green that is. Still looks really good. There's even some that have a center stem coming up that's still completely green. Here's one of those longins I was talking about. Almost looks completely unfazed. This one is a seedling. These are typically air layered. Not sure if it makes a difference in the cold hardiness, um, but this guy is untouched. You can see the katook froze back. That's going to get cut back down to the ground. There's some uh, shell ginger in here. Took the cold just fine. Once again, spiral ginger got pretty waxed. Looking over here to this side, I have multiple passion vines that lost all their leaves, defoliated, dropped the fruit. This one looks pretty untouched. This is just a volunteer. Um, it wasn't planted. A bird planted that. Um, some type of animal maybe planted it. Suriname cherry, very cold hardy, can't even tell. And then walking here behind my house, I mean, guys, this is the time of year I don't like to come outside. It's almost kind of depressing. It really bothered me the first couple of years it happened, and I, I guess you could say I'm getting used to it. This year, I was like, well, most of the farm, you know, is going to look a little rough, but at least we got the garden to look at. Well, we did take some damage out there, too. I'll kind of run into that real quick, but more or less, I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. Nick made a follow-up video after the frost. He got some crazy footage in the nursery. It literally looks like something out of Switzerland. Um, like I said, we didn't do any protection around the farm, but in the nursery, at least in the planted areas, we didn't do any protection, but in the nurseries areas, like the big greenhouse, we ran the water, that looks fine. Um, and a lot of the other subtropical, tropical plants, we put frost cloth on, the ones that we had enough cover for. Probably could have used another couple rolls. I tried to buy some at the last minute. Of course, last minute, like I said, and by that point, everybody else has already bought it up. Um, more of that spiraling ginger really kind of smacked back in here. Um, Turk's cap completely untouched in the understory. Just shows you the microclimate, really. It's all about location, location, location. Here's some more of those fried bananas, and everything was due for a reset pruning in here anyways, and that's something we're going to do in spring. Um, right after our last frost, you know, is when we will cut these back. So everybody always asks me, when do I cut back my dead plants? And that's after we have no chance of frost again. Things are starting to push out new growth. They say by leaving a lot of these leaves on here, that's going to give you a little bit of protection if we do get another frost. And there's not an if we do here in Florida. We're going into January. We're going to get another frost. We're going to get another freeze. Typically February, that's very common down here. Everybody thinks Florida, hot, tropical, coconuts, beaches. 
Um, being in Central Florida like this, guys, we do get frost, we do get freeze, and it's, it's a normal occurrence here. It's something you need to plan for um, when you're designing, when you're installing, um, and as you're laying out, you know, location is key with a lot of these plants, and that's what's allowed me to kind of push a lot of these plants and why they come back so well, is kind of keeping them in this deep microclimate understory. I mean, just goes to show you, understory banana, almost untouched, more exposed banana, completely fried. And that was the same thing with a lot of my Carambola star fruit. You can see the fruits on here do look like they got a little damage. The bottom leaves look perfectly fine. Um, this is just a burnt guava kind of hanging out in here. This is going to defoliate and come back. But up top is where you could see a little bit more of the frost damage where it was exposed. I noticed the same things on the ones by my house. And all of these guys are going to grow back. This is something we deal with every year, but the bananas definitely took a hit and won't be pushing again until spring. You could see that was almost a fully developed rack of, uh, I believe that's Saba. Um, it is a smaller Saba though, I'm not positive on that one. I have a lot of Namwa in here, a lot of Orinoco, Rajapuri. You can see the jackfruits really took a good hit. Um, Canistel doesn't look horrible, like the new growth on this almost looks untouched. Some of these outer leaves are definitely getting a little brown. I don't think it's going to completely defoliate, um, but it took a hit. Here's another star fruit. This one was in a really cool, you know, kind of protected like area. There's even some good star fruits on here still ready to be harvested. Um, let's get a star fruit. What do you guys say? January 1st, 2023. Still eating star fruit from the tree. Oh, I do think so. This thing's going to be pretty good. Hmm. I believe this variety is shrieking banging and that was a really good one quite delicious still pumping and if i didn't get frost these things would be pumping all year long so as long as we get nothing colder than what it was already these trees are going to continue to pump throughout the season um, i've had years where i cut them back to the ground after a cold and within six months they're fruiting again so these trees are super tough have taken cold for us really well here in this 9b zone of central florida canistel in a more protected location um, perfectly, you know, fine. Sabra de Potacaba, no damage whatsoever. Um, this star fruit, same thing as some of the others up towards the top where it was more exposed. We have some damaged leaves. This is a coconut cream mango. And this is one where I was talking about where I really wanted to wait to start talking about what frosted and what didn't, um, because the mango originally had no signs of, uh, any kind of damage. You know, some of these bottom leaves still look great. Firebush is dropping some dead on that. That's what you see there. The firebush is all going to need to be pruned back. It's not going to die. Just took a, took a little bit of a frost hit. And then as we get up here, some of these upper leaves on the mangoes, you can see where there was a little bit of that frost damage. Big old pissed off uh, jackfruit. Going to completely defoliate. And same thing with the carambola by my house. Um, you know, I'd say three quarters of the tree is untouched in that top 25%. It's where we're showing some frost damage. Uh, Groomy Chama, no damage whatsoever. These take the cold really well also. Some yam in there I need to get out. Guys, I am due for a, a pruning reset around this entire place. This is a Rolenia, which was already pissed off. I think it was time for a new tree. It was already dropping its leaves here before we even got any, uh, any of this cold event. I think this tree is ready to come out. Maybe time to plant a new one. Can you believe two weeks ago we had highs in the 50s and today it's in the 80s so florida is wild like that and makes it difficult to grow i think that's some of the struggles here with even trying to do annuals um you know nick thinks that a lot of the damage in the garden was probably because we didn't have a lot of cold prior the plants weren't hardened off and they just got hit with that you know really cold shock if we had had a lot of cold leading up to it it wouldn't have been as bad um sugar apple completely defoliated did not kill the tree um, I know a lot of people that strip their sugar apples, they strip their uh, atomoyas, and it actually, you know, they say it makes them fruit better the next year. A lot of times, even if these don't defoliate, I'm just going to strip them anyways, and this tree will be back in spring. So, no loss here whatsoever. Um, jackfruit again, got nailed. Lychee, completely untouched. White sapote, no problem. Um, Inga, ice cream bean, definitely a little bit mad. About the only halfway alive looking growth that's going to defoliate and come back. And we've got some macadamia nuts and some avocados. 
Another long in here, completely untouched. What's up, pups? I hear you, Shadow. We're over here making a video, dude. Um, avocado, no problem. Suriname cherry, no problem. Another big old avocado. And here's a really good example of what I was talking about with the Monstera. Um, and I have a really good comparison right over by my house in a more protected area where it doesn't look quite this beat up. Um, you know, this one has a lot of brown, brown, brown leaves on it. It's probably gonna completely drop all of these leaves off of here. And every day that goes by, they tend to get a little worse looking. But this one still has some green in the center, as you can see. And all the bananas over here got smoked. I guess I could peek over there real quick and just uh, show you guys what the mess looks like. Like I said, this time of year is a little bit sad. It's kind of depressing to look at everything like this. I uh, tend to spend more time off-site or in the office than I do outside over uh, January, February here in Florida just because it's, it's not in its prime. It's not in its lush. You can see all the Mexican sunflower that got smoked needs to be cut down to the ground. It's all gonna come back. And over here in these more exposed zones, um, those are big fire bushes that cook it all away. Gonna need to be cut back. And even some of the mulberries that still had leaves on them um, took some damage to the leaf because it, you know, it hadn't dropped its leaves yet. Loquat, no problem. Took the cold like a champ. This is one that I have been impressed with since year one of moving in here. This is an older tree. We're getting ready to air layer it, but this is a macadamia nut. Um, I've had 17 degrees here, and this one did take a little bit of leaf damage, but it didn't phase it. These trees are super cold hardy. Um, I guess the only trick with these is, is to keep the squirrels off of the nuts. That's probably been my biggest struggle, um, you know, keeping them more in a grove type setting. Maybe they were, they weren't in the understory in the, uh, you know, the squirrels didn't have such great access would probably give you a better chance of protecting them. But those trees are super cold hardy. Another avocado. And we've got some mulch to spread and a lot of plants to reset. So got a lot of these edible hibiscus in the nursery that took some frost. They're all gonna be getting pruned back and they'll be back here by spring. But these are all them togan spinaches. And you can see where the leaves just melted off of there. And they're done. The stems are still green and strong, um, so we can prune those and they will come back. They are not completely done. Uh, this is some of my more tropical bamboos. We grow a lot of Dendrocalamus asper and Giganteus. Um, you know, those can both get like six inch canes. Very tropical bamboos. These guys can get to 120 foot tall and they pretty much completely defoliate when we get those cold nights. I don't know if you guys can pick up the color in here, but the leaves are pretty much completely silver. Really took a beating. This is what they kind of tend to look like, and it's just gonna go ahead and self-mulch this area as it defoliates, and then it will refoliate again in spring once we start getting some rain. Um, these are not on irrigation. Bamboo does like water. So once we get through our dry seasons, usually when they perk back up, and they'll be back to where they were. But you can see some of the canes on this variety is probably getting in the four to five inch range. And they freeze to the ground almost every year. So I don't know if these will ever get to that full mature size, but look at the size of that cane. That is a beast. So much bigger than the old hammy eye. And here's a lot of our gingers and sad looking shade nursery um, that just took frost damage or things are going dormant or deciduous in the winter time, like all the turmerics really don't like to cut back the turmeric until it's completely dead let it send all that energy back into the root and it'll pop back up again in the spring this coming up here in front of me is a dwarf firebush this is a pretty big specimen it hasn't been topped out in a while probably got skipped last year and we'll reset these down to three or four foot let them bush back out so they're not so tall and leggy but they look a little rough right now and all of our sweet almond, even the new growth on the sweet almond in this cold event took a little bit of a crippling. Um, that's why you're seeing a lot of leaves here on the ground right now. I couldn't believe it. I mean, it, uh, a lot of those top leaves, that young fresh growth got a little bit pissed off. They curled, they turned. Um, these trees don't take the wind very well or bushes or they can almost become a tree. So we're gonna cut these down to three or four foot, reset all of these here in spring. Actually, I have a neighbor friend with a chipper, kind of hoping to just cut and chip those and not have to haul them over to the side of the farm and burn them. Firebush, once again, took it, took a little bit of a beating. Um, 
olives, no problem. Avocado, no problem. Pineapple guava, no problem. Over here is a sad cercopia. Last year, this frost didn't came back, expecting the same thing again this year. Um, Caliandra even took a little bit of cold damage. There's a really good example of an exposed Turk's cap. Completely fried, we'll just cut this all back um, and they'll regrowth and just stimulate the roots and come back again in spring. So nothing is dead in this zone. Ginger, what do you think about this tour? Let's go see what else we can find fried. Let's go. Elephant ears always get frosted every year. And we did have a little damage in the Japotacaba zone. Trees are super cold hardy, but whenever they're pushing new growth, um, that young tender growth is susceptible to a little bit of damage. I could show you here on the yellow Japotacaba. Got some spots on the leaves. Um, what's, in, what's interesting is I have one of these in front of my house at six, seven foot, and it had zero damage. Um, a little bit of a more protected location like on this white Japotacaba. You could see a little bit of brown on some of that younger growth and it's typically just those new leaves Where they're pink like this. They can kind of curl a little bit. They'll get spotty You could see this was pushing new growth and just got a little upset But any of the growth that was hardened off wasn't affected whatsoever um, Not gonna hurt the trees it just took away a little bit of that pretty effect Oh Look at all those brown nanners not looking so much like a rainforest here right now. I definitely noticed that this zone took a little bit more damage. Um, I think one of the issues here was we didn't get the timer shut off. Water came on um, and it wasn't on the entire time to like insulate the plant. So it just gave it a blast of water. And some of that new growth took a little bit of a hit. Plants are still fine. They're just a little mad where they were pushing. And these are all white Chipotacabos. That is a really mad fire bush. You can see like on these strigopes. Oh, really mad. Might even drop a couple of leaves. And a couple things in this area. Definitely be waiting the spring to do anything with. Where they'll push out some new growth again and be happy. It was cold here. Um, Nick told me that it was comparable to Montana cold. We actually went fishing, I think it was Christmas Eve or the night prior. And uh, it was like, it was supposedly in the 30s on the boat, but it felt like it was in the 20s, maybe even colder than that with the wind chill. Um, and it's just the humidity here. The cold in Florida goes right to the bones compared to like a dry cold. So we do get cold. All right, so out of all the annual vegetable garden areas, um, hope you guys can hear the audio right now with the goose going off. Um, this entry garden really did the best. It showed the least amount of damage. Um, everything in this area actually looks still pretty good. There's a couple things that started to throw a little bit of frost damage, but for the most part, I don't know if it was the tree. Um, I don't know if it was the better soil. I don't know if it's the you know, location, maybe more microclimate over here, or just the fact that the water came on in the other garden, um, why this area did so much better. Hey, yo Nick. What's up? All right, I told him I'm not gonna talk about the garden too much. You made a video about this, right? Yeah, I'm spraying Roundup on everything. So. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put a link in the description down below. We'll let him go to your video and see what, see what happened out here. Perfect. We're on the rebound? We're on the rebound. 2023 will be better? Hopefully. All right. <laughs> Tell anybody about our secret roundup mix. I don't know. I'm sure that's biologicals. All right, so here is our beat up nursery, and it's just not looking in its prime right now. A lot of our uh, deciduous trees, like our peaches and our plums and our mulberries and our figs, were still covered in leaves. So a lot of the brown you see in this area is actually a very cold hardy species. They just still had leaves on them when we got that cold night. Um, and they finally lost all of their leaves. But I thought this was a pretty interesting observation. Um, the water was on in this area the first night and where it came up and touched the bamboo there about three to four foot above the fence, it actually killed the leaves where the ice dried on there. And then above where there was no water, and that is the sea breeze variety, is still completely green and untouched. So I thought that was quite interesting that there was actually more damage from the overhead water than there was good. 
Um, like I mentioned, the first night we had here was about 23. The next night we had was 25. And that was for like five or six hours. So when I knew that was coming and I saw what happened over here the first night, I shut off the irrigation and I manually came out here and I turned on this side where we have more of our tropicals. And guys, this was covered in frost blanket. That's the white blanket we use. Supposedly it's good for 10 to 12 degrees. And you know, where I had guavas in the understory that were completely defoliated, we'd laid these down, put frost cloth on them, put frost cloth on the papayas, um, and they look pretty untouched. Dwarf Barbados cherry, I mean, this stuff is definitely not supposed to take 25 degrees for eight hours. You can barely even tell. Um, I really like what the blanket did here. I think it gave us a ton of protection. Um, Adamoyas even still have leaves on them. That's not typical. Um, once again, these were just laid down, put frost cloth on top of them, and they took it just fine. All of our carambola trees were laid down. These were all covered up also, looked just fine. Kind of have some Hong Kong orchids in here. We ran out of frost cloth for, weren't really too worried about. We've got too many of those. Um, you can see they took some leaf damage. They'll come back. This is a really interesting one that took it like a champ. And you saw over there in the fully exposed, you know, planted area, it got fried. But this is the Cercopia trees. These are all at a fruiting age. We've actually eaten off a couple of these already. And these were laid down with the frost cloth along with the mangoes being laid down. And anything that really didn't get laid down that was a little bit more cold sensitive, you can kind of see, you know, some damage on, some damage on, larger canistel, some damage on. This is a bit of an exposed zone, so it did get very, very cold over here. All the loquats still look pretty good, but even though where you see some of the new growth, you see a couple of brown tips. Anytime you have that young, tender growth like that, it is susceptible, even if it's a cold, hardy plant, to leaf damage. And this is the kind of growth that I'm talking about that is way more susceptible to cold when it's pushing young, new growth like this. Like on a mango, it typically starts off a, a pink, orangish color, sometimes turns to a yellow before it goes to green. You know, this is the stuff that's a little bit more on the tender side. Same thing here with the loquat. Um, new growth on the loquat, you can see we have a little bit of a brown on a couple of leaves. Um, all this hardened off growth is perfectly fine, unaffected, you know, new growth actually has a little bit of damage nothing to really worry about though all right that's about it for the nursery forgot to show you guys that one monstera by the house hold tight all right so some of these gingers up in the zone one by my house cherry the rio grand um all have done really well the ethiopian cardamons um galongo lesser galongal shell gingers Everything in here is still looking really good. It's just gonna need to be cut back in spring just because I like to give it that yearly reset. Um, Japotacaba in the ground, took it like a champ. But this is that Monstera I wanted to show you guys. And this thing looked almost untouched for a couple weeks and it's just starting to really show some of that frost damage. But some of these leaves that are underneath, like this one's kind of spotty. This one underneath doesn't look too bad at all. Kind of still has that dark green. It's not black like this. That is definitely beat up. Um, this one completely defoliated last year though. It's something that happens every single year. Completely, you know, grew back out, puts its fruits back on. Um, it's not gonna kill the plant, so. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this frost update. It is 2023. It is time to get your butt outside to start a food forest, to start a garden, to pound some freaking dirt. Good job.